Hello, and welcome to the next lesson in this Windows Deployment Services training course for Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. In the last lesson, I showed you how to configure a WDS server. Now that the initial configuration is out of the way, the next step is to add images to the WDS server. Images, in a nutshell, are essentially the operating systems which can be downloaded from the WDS server and installed onto client computers. There are four types of images which can be added to a WDS server. These are boot images, install images, custom images, and discover images. To keep things simple, for this lesson I will focus on just two of the image types, namely boot images and install images. Boot and install images are the easiest and arguably the most important types of images to understand. To install operating systems using Windows Deployment Services, you must add at least one boot image and one install image to the WDS server. Don't worry, I will cover custom images and discover images in later lessons. The aim of this lesson is to understand what boot images and install images are and what they are used for, and to learn how to add boot images and install images to a WDS server. Without further ado, let's get started. If you think back to our last lesson, whilst configuring the WDS server, I was asked to choose a location for the remote install folder. The remote install folder is where the WDS server saves its images. This is why in some Microsoft literature, the remote install folder is commonly referred to as the image store. The remote install folder, or the image store if you prefer, contains two important subfolders. These are the boot subfolder and the images subfolder. The boot subfolder contains all of the boot images, whilst the images subfolder contains all of the install images. When boot and install images are added to the WDS server, the important files for those images are saved to the image store. Now that we know where boot and install images are stored, what exactly are boot and install images, and how do you add them to the image store? A boot image is essentially a copy of Windows PE. Windows PE is the pre-installation platform that a computer boots into before installing Windows. Whilst in Windows PE, you can prepare the computer for installation by selecting the desired language, keyboard layout, and partitioning scheme. If you have ever installed a copy of Windows, you should be familiar with these options, and thus be familiar with Windows PE. Boot images can be added to the WDS server by exporting the boot.wim file, which contains the Windows PE interface. The boot.wim file can be found in the sources directory of the Windows DVD. Later on in this lesson, I will demonstrate how this is done. An install image contains the actual Windows operating system which is to be downloaded from the WDS server and installed onto a client computer. Windows deployment services can deploy a wide range of Windows client operating systems, including Windows 8.1, Windows 8, Windows 7, and even Windows Vista. You can also use Windows Deployment Services to deploy server operating systems, such as Windows Server 2012 R2, Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2008 R2, and Windows Server 2008. Install images can be added to the WDS server by exporting the install.wim file, which contains the Windows operating system. The install.wim file can be found in the sources directory of the Windows DVD. Now that I have explained what boot images and install images are, and what you must do to add them to the WDS server, I will now change to my Windows Server 2012 R2 server with Windows Deployment Services installed to demonstrate how this is done. 
If you recall from the last lesson, I ran through all of the initial configurations required for the WDS server. We are now in a position to add a boot image and an install image to this WDS server. In this demonstration, I will add the boot and install images from my Windows 8.1 Pro DVD. If I open File Explorer, notice that my Windows 8.1 Pro DVD is already inserted into the DVD drive. If I open up the DVD, navigate to the Sources folder, and then scroll down through the list of files, notice in this directory we have the boot.wim file. This is the file that contains the Windows PE boot image. If I scroll down a little further, we also have the install.wim file. It is this file that contains the Windows 8.1 Pro operating system image. If I go back a couple of levels and open up the E drive, you will notice the remote install folder. This is where Windows Deployment Services will save the boot and install images once they've been added from the Windows DVD. To be more precise, if I open the remote install folder, the boot image will be saved in the boot subfolder and the install image will be saved in the images subfolder. I will now close File Explorer and demonstrate how to add the boot and install images to the image store. First, open Server Manager from the lower left corner and select Tools from the top right corner. From the drop-down list, select Windows Deployment Services. This will open the Windows Deployment Services console. In the left-hand pane, expand the Servers option. Listed here is my WDS server, wds1.techtipsfromwill.co.uk. If I expand the WDS server, notice that we have some options. The options I will focus on for this lesson are the Install Images folder and the Boot Images folder. Notice that if I click on these folders, there are currently no items to show. This is because no images have been added yet. To add a boot image, right click on the boot images folder and select Add Boot Image from the drop down list. This will open the Add Image wizard. The first screen you will see is the Image File page. From here, you need to enter the path to the boot.wim file. You can enter the path manually if you know it, or alternatively, you can use the Browse button to locate it if you wish. When you have finished, click the Next button. The next screen is the Image Metadata page. From here, you can enter a name and a description for the boot image. To make the image easier to identify, I will change the image name to Windows 8.1 Setup X64. When you have finished, click the Next button. On the Summary page, confirm that you are happy with the options you've selected and click Next to add the boot image. It can take a couple of minutes for the boot image to be added. Once the process is complete, you will be notified. Notice that my Windows 8.1 Setup X64 boot image has now been added to the boot images folder. As you can see, adding boot images using the Windows Deployment Services console is very straightforward. But you can also perform this task using Windows PowerShell. I will therefore delete the boot image and close the Windows Deployment Services console so that I can demonstrate how to add a boot image using Windows PowerShell. After opening the Windows PowerShell tool, I will start by entering the commandlet import WDS boot image. I will then add the path switch, followed by the path to the boot.wim file to be added. Finally, I will add the new image name switch and enter the same Windows 8.1 Pro X64 name for the boot image. Windows PowerShell will take a short while to add the boot image to the WDS server. Once complete, you will be notified. 
If I close Windows PowerShell and reopen the Windows Deployment Services console using Server Manager, notice that the Windows 8.1 Pro x64 boot image has reappeared. Now that the boot image is added, I will next demonstrate how to add an install image. To do this, right click on the Install Images folder and select Add Install Image from the drop down list. The first screen you will see is the image group page. From here, you are asked to create an image group. Just like groups in Active Directory are used to organize user accounts, and just like folders on a hard disk are used to organize files, image groups are used to organize install images. From here, I will select the Create an Image Group Named Radio button, and will enter the name for the image group, Windows 8.1 Images x64. When finished, click the Next button. The next screen you will see is the Image File page. From here, you need to enter the path to the install.wim file. Since I know the location of the file, I will again enter it manually, and will then click the Next button. The next image is the Available Images page. This page shows you all of the images that can be added to the WDS server from the install.wim file. It is not uncommon for install.wim files to contain more than one image. Notice that the install.wim file from my Windows 8.1 Pro DVD gives me a choice of two images. The first image contains the Windows 8.1 Pro operating system, and the second image contains a standard Windows 8.1 operating system. If I were to add both of these images, I will essentially have two operating systems added to my WDS server, which can be deployed to clients. Selecting an image to add is simply a matter of ticking the tick box to the left of the image. For now, I will leave both images selected and will click the Next button. The next screen is the Summary page. Here, you can review the selections you've made. If you are happy with your selections, click the Next button to install the images. Windows Deployment Services will start to add the images. Depending on the speed of your server and the number of images you've selected, this can take a number of minutes to complete. When the images have been added, click the Finish button. Notice that the Windows 8.1 and Windows 8.1 Pro images I selected are now appearing in the image group. Now that you know how to add install images using the Windows Deployment Services console, I will now demonstrate how to do the same, this time using Windows PowerShell. First, I will delete the Windows 8.1 Images x64 image group I created earlier. Deleting the image group will also delete the images in that group. Now that the group has been deleted, I will close the Windows Deployment Services console and will open Windows PowerShell. First, I will recreate the image group. To do this, I will issue the commandlet new WDS install image group. I will then add the name switch and will enter the name of the install group as Windows 8.1 Images x64. Windows PowerShell will prompt you after the image group has been created. Now that the image group has been created, I can add my images. I will first query which images are available to me in the install.wim file on my Windows 8.1 Pro DVD. I will do this by entering the commandlet get Windows image. I will then add the image path switch and enter the path to the install.wim file on my Windows DVD. When I press enter, Windows PowerShell will report the images it has found within the install.wim file. Again, in my case, I can see that there are two images, the first being Windows 8.1 Pro and the second being Windows 8.1. Whilst viewing the list of available images, 
make a note of the name of the image or images you would like to add. When you add an install image using Windows PowerShell, you are required to enter the name of the individual image. To add the images using Windows PowerShell, run the commandlet import wds install image. Next, I will add the path switch and will enter the path to the install.wim file that contains the images I would like to add. Next, I need to specify which image group I want to add the images to. To do this, I will add the image group switch and will enter the name of the image group that I created earlier. Lastly, I need to enter the name of the individual images I want to add to the image group. To do this, add the switch image name. The first image I would like to add is the Windows 8.1 Pro image. When the image is added, Windows PowerShell will notify you. To add the second image, I will issue the same command, only this time adding the image name of the second image I'd like to add, which in my case is Windows 8.1. Now that both images have been added, I will close Windows PowerShell and will reopen the Windows Deployment Services console. If I navigate back to the Install Images folder, notice that my image group, Windows 8.1 Images x64, is again listed, and that the Windows 8.1 and Windows 8.1 Pro images have once again been added. This concludes this lesson on adding boot and install images to Windows Deployment Services. I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and found it useful. In the next lesson, I will demonstrate the various methods of deploying these images to client computers on the network. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, please feel free to browse our YouTube channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next lesson.